back live in New York. It's theCUBE, it's not SNL, it's better than SNL. Lisa Martin and John Furrier here with about 10,000 to 12,000 <laughs> folks. There is a ton of energy here, there's a ton of interest in what's going on, but one of the things that we know that AWS is really well known for is its massive ecosystem, and one of its ecosystem partners is joining us. Please welcome Dominic Revita, the VP of Product Marketing from Single Store. Dominic, great to have you on the program. Well, thank you, glad to be here. It was a nice here. opening, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lesson L, who doesn't, right? Right, I know. So, some big news came out today. Yes. Funding, good yes. number. Talk to us a little bit about that before we kind of dig into Single Store and what you guys are doing with AWS. Right, yeah, thank you. We announced this morning our, our latest round, 116 million. Um, that really, I mean, we're really grateful to our customers and our investors and, and partners and employees in making Single Store a, a success to go on this journey of really to fulfill our mission to unify and simplify modern real-time data. So talk to us about Single Store. Give us the, 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 the value prop, the key differentiators, because obviously customers have choice. Help us understand where you're nailing it. Yeah, Single Store is all about what we like to say the moments that matter. When you have an analytical question about what's happening in the moment, single store is your best way to solve that cost effectively. So that is for, in the case of Thorn, where they're helping to protect and save children from online trafficking. Or in the case of True Digital, which early in the pandemic was a company in uh, Southeast Asia that used anonymized uh, phone pings to identify real-time population density changes and movements across Thailand to have a proactive response. So really real-time data in the moment can help to save lives quite literally, but also it does things that are just good commercially that gives you an advantage like what we do with Uber to help real-time pricing and things like this. You know, it's interesting this data intensity happening right now. We were talking earlier on theCUBE with another guest and we said, why is it happening now, right? The big data has been around since the dupe days. Yeah, that was hard to work with. Then data lakes kicked in, but we seem to be like in the past year, everyone's now aware like, wow, I got a lot of data. Is it the pandemic? So like now they, uh, we're seeing customers understand the consequences. So how do you look at that? Because is it just timing, evolution? Are they now getting it? Uh, or is the technology better? Is machine learning better? What are the for what's the forces driving the massive data growth, acceleration? in terms yeah. of implementing and getting stuff out, like done. Right. <laughs> I, I, we think it's the confluence of a lot of those things you mentioned there. Uh, first of all, what did we just celebrate the 15 year anniversary of the iPhone? So that is like wallpaper now, it's just faded into our daily lives. We don't even think of that as a separate thing. So there's an expectation that we all have instant information and not just for the consumer interactions, for the business interactions. That permeates everything. I think COVID with the pandemic forced everyone, every business to try to move to digital first. And so that put pressure on the digital service economy to, to mature even faster and to be, to be digital first. That is what drives what we call data intensity and more generally the, the economic phenomenon is the data intensive era. It's a, a continuous uh, competition and game for customers in every moment, in every location, in every dimension, the more data ha you have, the better value prop you can give. And so Single Store is uniquely positioned to and focused on solving this problem of data intensity by bringing and unifying data together. What's the big uh, customer success story? Can you share any examples that kind of highlight that? What are some cool things that are happening that can illustrate this new, I won't say bit that's been flipped, it's been happening for a while, but can you share some cutting edge customer successes? Yeah, I, it's happening across a lot of industries. So I would say first in financial uh, services, FinTech. So, I mean, FinTech is always at the leading edge of these kind of technology adoptions for speeds and fees like that. So we have a customer named IEX Cloud, um, and they're focused on providing real-time financial data as an API. So it's a data product, API first. They're providing a lot of historical information on instruments and that sort of thing. Um, uh, as well as real-time trending information. So they have customers like CK Alpha, for instance, who are providing real-time updates on massive, massive data sets. They looked at lots of different uh, ways to do this, and there's the traditional sort of transactional OLTP database, and then maybe if you want to scale an API like theirs, you might have a separate kind of in-memory cache, and then a, yet another database for analytics. And so we bring all that together and simplify that, and. The benefit is simplification, but it's also this, this uh, unification and lower latency. Um, 
Another example is GE, who is basically uses us to bring together lots of financial information to provide uh, quicker close to the end of month process across many different systems. So we think about special purpose databases. You mentioned one of the customers having those. We were in the keynote this morning where AWS is like, we have the broadest set of purpose, special purpose databases. But you're saying the industry can't afford them anymore. Why, and what it makes single store unique in terms of what you deliver? Yeah, I, it goes back to this data intensity in that the, the new business models that are, that are coming out now are all about giving you this instant context. And that that's all data, data driven and it's digital and it has, it's also analytical. And so the reason that you can't afford to do this otherwise is data is getting so big, moving that data gets expensive because in the cloud you pay for every byte you store, every byte you process, every byte you move. So data movement is a cost in dollars and cents, it's a cost in time, it's also a cost in skill sets. So when you have many different specialized data sets or data based technologies, you need skilled people to manage those. So that's why we think the industry needs to be simplified and that's why you're seeing this unification trend across the database industry and other parts of the stack happening. With, with AWS, I mean, they've been a great partner of ours for, for years since we launched our first cloud database uh, product and their perspective is, is a little bit different. They're offering choice um, of the specialty because many people build this way um, but if you're going after real-time data, you need to bring it there. They also offer single store as a service on AWS. We offer it that way. It's in the AWS marketplace, <laughs> so it's easily consumable that way. Access to real-time data is no longer a nice to have for any company. It's table stakes. We saw that especially in the last 20 months or so with companies that needed to pivot so quickly. What is it about single store that delivers that, you talked about moments that matter. Mm -hmm. Talk about the access to real-time data, how that's a differentiator as well. Yeah, I think businesses need to be where their customers are and in the moments their customers are interacting. So that is sort of the real-time business driver. As far as technology-wise, it's not easy to do this. Um, and you think about like what makes a database fast, a major way of what makes it fast is how you store the data. And so since 2014, when we first released this what Gartner called at the time hybrid transactional analytical processing, or HTAP, where we brought transactional data and analytical data together. Fast forward five years to 2019, we released this innovation called universal storage, which does that in a single unified table type. Why that matters is because, I would say basically cost efficiency and better speed. Again, because you pay for the storage and you pay for the movement, if you're not duplicating that data, moving it across different stores, you're going to have a better experience. One of the things you guys pioneered is unifying workloads. You mentioned some of the things you've done. Uh, others are now doing it, Snowflake, Google, uh, and others. What does that mean for you guys? I mean, because are they copying you? Are they trying to meet the functionality? I, I think mean, unification, I mean, people want to just store things and make it, get all the table stakes, check boxes, compliance, security, right. and just keep coding and keep building. Well, I, we, we think it's actually great because they're validating what we've been seeing in the market for years. And obviously they see that it's, it's needed by our customers. Um, and so we welcome them to sort of the, the party in terms of bringing <laughs> these kind of unified workloads together. Um, Is it easy or hard? It's, it's a difficult thing. You know, we, yeah. like we started this in 2014, um, and we have now have lots of production workloads on this. So we, sort of, we know where all the production edge cases are, and that capability is also a building block towards a broader, you know, expansive set of capabilities that we're, we've sort of moved on to that next phase. And tomorrow, actually, we have an event called the Real-Time Data Revolution, Revolution, excuse me, where we're announcing what's in that new product. Is that a physical event or a virtual? It's a virtual event, yeah. Okay, so we'll get the URL in the show notes, or, or if you know, just go to your site, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, single store, real-time data revolution, you'll find it. Okay. Can you tease us with like the top three takeaways from Revolution tomorrow? Yeah, so like I said, you know, the story, what makes a database fast, it's the storage, and we completed that functionality three years ago with universal storage. What we're now doing for this next phase of the evolution is making enterprise features available. 
And workspaces is one of the foundational capabilities there. What single store workspaces does is it allows you to have this isolation of compute between your different workloads. So that's often a concern to new users to single store. How can I combine transactions and analytics uh, together? That seems like something that might be not a good thing. Well, there are multiple ways we've been doing that with resource governance, workload management. Workspaces offers another management capability and it's also flexible in that you can scale those workloads independently or if you have a multi-tenant um, application, you can segment your application, your customer tenant workloads by each workspace. Um, another capability we're releasing is called WASM, which is W-A-S-M, uh, WebAssembly. This is something that's really growing in the open source community and, and Single Store is contributing to that open source um, CNCF project with WASI and WASM. You've, where it's been mentioned mostly in the last few years has been in the browser as a more efficient way to run code in the browser. We're adapting that technology to allow you to run any language of your choice in the database. And why that's important, again, is like, for data movement. As data gets large and petabyte yeah. sizes, you can't move it in and out of Pandas Great and innovation. Python. That's real valuable. Yeah, so we call this Code Engine with WASM. And what do you call it? Code Engine powered by WASM. Wow, wow. And that's open source. We contribute to the, the WASM open source uh, But you committee. guys have a service that you... Yes, it's our implementation in our database. Okay. But WASM allows you to have code that's portable to any sort of yeah. runtime, which is, yeah. so you, at release. Move the code, not the data. Exactly. <laughs> With the compute. <laughs> That's right, bring the compute to the data, is what we say. You mentioned a whole bunch of, of great customer examples, GE, Uber, um, Thor, and you talked about IEX Cloud. When you're in customer conversations, are you dealing mostly with customers that are looking to you to help replace an existing database that was struggling from a performance perspective? Are these, or are you working with startups who are looking to build a product on single store? Is it both? It, it is a mix of both. I would say among like SaaS scale-up companies, their, their API, for instance, is their product. Um, or their SaaS application is their product. So quite literally, we're the, we're the data engine and the database powering their scale to be able to sign that next big customer. Or to at least sleep at night to know that it's not going to crash if they sign that next big customer. Um, so in those cases, we're mainly replacing a lot of uh, databases like MySQL, Postgres, where they're typically starting. But more and more we're finding, you know, we're f it's free to start with single story. You can run it in production for free. Uh, and in our developer community, we see a lot of customers running in that way. Uh, we have a really interesting community member who has uh, a Minecraft server analytics <laughs> that he's building based on that single store free tier. In the enterprise, it's different because there are many incumbent databases there. So it typically is a case where there is a maybe a new product offering. They're maybe delivering a FinTech API or a new SaaS digital offering. Again, to better participate in this digital service economy. And they're looking for a better price performance for that real-time experience in the app. Um, that's typically the starting point, but yeah, there are replacements of traditional incumbent databases as well. How has the customer conversation evolved the last couple of years as we, we talked about? You know, one of the things we learned in the pandemic was access to real-time data and those moments that matter isn't a nice to have anymore for businesses. There was that forced march to digital. We saw the survivors, we're seeing the thrivers, but I want to get your perspective on that from, from the customers. How has the conversation evolved or elevated, escalated within an organization as every company has to be a data company? It, it really depends on their business strategy, how, how they are adapting or how they have adapted to this new digital first orientation, and, and what does that mean for them? Um, in the direct uh, interaction with their customers and partners, often what it means is they realize that they need to take advantage of using more data in the customer and partner interaction and when they come to look those new ideas for new product introductions, they find that it's complicated and expensive to build in the old way. Uh, and if you're going to have these real-time interactions, interactive applications, APIs, with all this context, um, you're going to have to find a better, more cost-effective approach to get that to market faster, but also not have a big, sprawling, data-based technology infrastructure 
we find that like in those situations, we're replacing four or five different database technologies. A specialized database for key value, a specialized database for Because there's search. no unification before. Is well, that one of the reasons? Because I think it's an awareness thing. I think yeah. like technology awareness takes a little bit of time. <laughs> that there's a new way to do things, right? Um, I think the old saying about you know don't pave cow paths when the car you know you could build a straight road and pave it. You don't have to pave along the cow path. I think that's the natural course of technology adoption. And so as and more the, and the pandemic too highlighted a lot of the things like do we really need that like. <laughs> That's Who's going to service that? <laughs> so it's kind of an awakening moment there where it's like, hey, you know, let's look at what's working. That's right. Double down on it. Yeah, absolutely. What are you excited about? New round of funding, we talked about obviously probably investments and key growth areas, but what excites you about being part of Single Store and being a partner of AWS? Well, yeah, I, it, Single Store is super exciting. I've been in the, this industry a long time as an engineer and an engineering leader and then uh, came to, at the time we were in MemSQL, came into Single Store. And just the, the, that unification and simplification, the systems that I had built as a system engineer and helped architect, did the job. They could get the speed and scale you needed to do track and trace kinds of use cases in real time. But it was a big trade off you had to make in terms of the complexity, the skill sets you needed, and the cost, and just hard to maintain. And this, is, what excites me most about Single Store is that it really, it, is, it feels like the iPhone moment for databases. Because it's not something you asked for, but once your friend has it and shows it to you, why would you have three different devices in yeah. your pocket with a flip phone, a calculator, <laughs> <laughs> remember these days? Yes. And a Blackberry pager. <laughs> you just or suddenly, a computer, <laughs> that's <laughs> right. So you just suddenly started using the iPhone and that is sort of the moment it feels like we're at in the, in the, in the database market where yeah. there's a growing awareness and those announcements you mentioned show that others are, are seeing And your same. point earlier about the iPhone throwing off a lot of data. So now you have data explosions at levels that unprecedented we've never seen before. Right. And the fact that you want to have that iPhone moment too. Right. As a database. Yeah, absolutely. And, Great and stuff. The other part of your question with what, you know, what excites us about at AWS, AWS has been a great partner since the beginning. I mean, when we first released our database, it was the cloud database, was on AWS by customer demand. That's where our customers were. That's where they were building other applications. And now we have integrations with na other native services like AWS Glue, and we're in the marketplace. Uh, we've expanded, you know, that said, we are a multi-cloud system. We, you know, are uh, available in any cloud of your choice, and on premise, and in hybrid. So we're multi-cloud, hybrid, and SaaS distribution. Got it. All right. Got it, so the event is tomorrow, Revolution. Where can folks go to register? What time does it start? 1 p.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, just Google uh, single store real-time data revolution and you'll find it. Love for everyone to join us. All right, we look forward to it. Dominic, thank you so much for joining us talking about single store, the value prop, the differentiators, the validation that's happening in the market and what you guys are doing with AWS. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Our pleasure. For Dominic Ravita and John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from New York at AWS Summit 22. John and I are going to be back after a short break, so come back. <laughs>